doing okay and you're almost done with the assignment remember it's due on friday okay so what we're going to do for submission of the assignment is you guys can email them to me but not everybody in the group should email them i just want one submission per group okay so let me write this down So you can send it anytime before uh, Friday. I think 23.59 is fine. That's plenty of time. Uh, this is the 30th. Uh, one submission per group. So you email it to me. Uh, my email L Qua at Nust dot NA. OK, so please make sure it is sent to me. Uh, by that time, so if they six of you in the group, only one email. OK, and all your names. Names. Last student numbers. Must. Be written or I should be able to clearly see uh, who is in the group. So remember, it's a minimum of three people, a maximum of six people. OK, make sure everybody in the group has contributed in some way. I know some people are waiting for Friday to say, can I join your group? Ask them, what were you waiting for all this time? OK, we've already done all the work. We're not just going to put your name here. OK, so that is it about the assignment. I think that is clear. Please make sure it is submitted on time. Is that fine? Yes, ma'am. OK. So this is on the assignment. Because I've been getting questions. If you are done, you can already submit it. Um, I might not reply to your email that I have received it. That's okay because it's a big group and yeah, so don't worry. As long as you have sent it in your email box, you, you have that uh, sent items. You can always show me if I didn't receive it that we did send it. Here it is in my inbox, in my outbox or whatever. OK, so for today's class, we are going to finish off the worksheet, the last exercise that I gave you, exercise four. And I've also um, downloaded or posted uh, today's worksheet. I hope you have it. It's called exercise five. That one is on confidence intervals. So I want us to very quickly look at the last two questions and then we will be done. So we were supposed to do number three. I hope you can see my screen. Can you guys see it? Can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can, ma'am. Okay. 
Right. So number three says of the total 40 graduating honors students at NUST, only six are, are planning to proceed and do their masters. If uh, we are to take a random sample of 20 graduating students, what is the probability that A, 17% or less of the graduating students will plan to do their masters? So here you can clearly see that this is uh, her proportion. So we are estimating the proportion in our sample. And we say that the way we do this is similar to the way we did it with the mean where we would um, state our range for X bar, we would standardize, we would read from the standard normal table, and then we would give the probability. So when you have this question here, this is number three, what you need to do is write the information that you are given. So we are told that uh, pi, this is the population parameter. So how many students altogether out of all those who are graduating? We are told that pi is equal to 6 over 40. So you can write that as a percentage, as a decimal, as a fraction. It's fine. So this is pi, not p, because that is the population. We're told that there are 40 who are graduating. So 40 is the population. Then we've picked a sample of 20 students, so small n is equal to 20. Now we are asked to find the probability that p is less than or equal to 17%. Now 17% is just 0 0.17. Okay, so now that we have this, what we do is we standardize P so we can read uh, the Z score from the table. So this is the probability. When I standardize P, I will get Z. This is less than, we say P minus our pi. So it's minus six over 40. Then I divide this by I have a very big square root here and everything in my denominator is going to go in the square root. So I have pi multiplied by one minus pi. So I have six over 40 multiplied by one minus six over 40. And this is divided by N, which is 20. Okay, so I just want to close my brackets nicely so it's a very big bracket like that so what i got here this is z is less than or equal to 0 0.25 Okay, so that's what I have. Z is less than or equal to 0 0.25. Then I'm going to uh, find this on my normal table. So just to illustrate, this is what I will be looking for on my standard normal. So zero is right there in the middle. 0 0.25 is over there. So I'm looking for the probability that uh, Z is less than this value. That means the area on the left of 0 0.25. So this area over here. Okay, so I go to my standard normal. So this is the cumulative one, which is the one you'll be given in the test. So I want to practice as much as possible on it. So we're looking for 0 0.25. So I look for 0 0.2 in this column. Here is 0 0.2. Then this is 0 0.20, 0 0 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, and then 0.25 is over there. Okay. 
Okay, so this probability that Z is less than or equal to 0 0.25 is equal to 0 0.5987. Then as usual, you write a sentence to answer the question because this is a word problem. So you would say something like the probability that 17% or less of the, how was it worded, of the graduating students will plan to do their masters, of the graduating students uh, will do their masters is 0 0.5987 or you can also say it is 59.87 percent okay so something like that so again you can always word it a little bit different but uh, however you word it the meaning should be the same as what I have over here then B B says 20% or more of the graduating students will proceed to do their masters. So we're looking for the probability that P is greater than or equal to 20%. Okay, and we know that 20% is just 0 0.2. So this is the same as the probability that P is greater than or equal to 0 0.2. Then, as usual, we standardize. So, P, here I have Z. This is greater than or equal to. When I standardize, I have 0 0.2 minus pi, which is 6 over 40. You can always convert that to a decimal. And then I have my big square root. I have 6 over 40. Uh, multiply by 1 minus 6 over 40 and then this is all divided by uh, 20. So all of this is under my square root. Then you close your bracket. Okay. This is the, just the probability that Z is greater than or equal to 0 0.63. So the area that we're looking for here is 0, 0 0.63 is somewhere here. So we want greater than, greater than is to the right. So we're looking for this area over here. Okay, so uh, our table gives us this area here and we want this one here. So what we could do is we can read this area from our table and then say one minus uh, this area that we get over there because the entire area under the normal curve is equal to one. So if I want this part over here, I just say one, the entire thing minus this one, which I read from the table. So I'll read this from the table. The probability that Z is greater than or equal to 0 0.363. This is one minus, go to our normal table, 0 0.6 here. And then six zero, six one, six two, six three. That is what we have. So it's zero point seven three five seven. Okay, can work this out.
Okay, when I did, I got 0 0.2643, which is just 26.43%. Then again, you write a sentence to answer the question. So I'll leave that to you. So this was homework. So I hope you've already written a statement to answer the question. So you would say something like uh, the probability that 20% or more of the graduating students will proceed to do their masters is 26.343%. And then the last question, number four. A says basic business statistics B is one of the gatekeeper courses at NUST. 63% of the NUST students are in favor of the removal of this course. A random sample of 300 students was selected and asked if they favor the move. What is the probability that more than 67% of the selected students favor the move? So this is another simple one. We write down what we're given. We're told that pi is equal to 63%. So this is 0 0.63. And then we have selected uh, a random sample of 300 students. So N is equal to 300. Then our question is, what is the probability that P is greater than 0 0.67? Okay, so we do the same thing. We standardize and then read from our Z table. So this is the probability that Z, so P changes to Z when we standardize it. This is greater than 0 0.67 minus pi, which is 0 0.63 over, I have a big square root, uh, pi 0 0.63, 1 minus pi, which is 1 minus 0 0.63, and then I divide by N, which is equal to 300. Okay, so just make sure you write this uh, correctly. And when you type it on your calculator, you put the brackets when necessary. Everything here must be under the square root. So if you don't type it correctly, your calculator might read it as just the numerator being under the square root, and that will give you a wrong answer. Okay, so this is the probability that Z is greater than 1.43. So this is what I got. Uh, you guys should check, see if what I did is correct in case I made a mistake somewhere. Okay, so this is a probability that Z is greater than 1.43. So if we were to draw this, uh, we have zero right there in the middle, then 1.43 is somewhere here. Now we're saying greater than 1.43, that means to the right of 1.43. So we want this area here. Now we know our table reads the area going that way. So if you want this small area here, we will just say one minus whatever uh, probability we get over here. So the probability that Z is greater than 1.43. We need to go to our table. So this is our table. We look for 1.4. There it is. And this is 1.40, 41, 42, 43. That is the value that we get. So we will say 1 minus 0 0.9236. Okay, 
So that is what we will say. And when you work this out, I got 0 0.07. Six four, okay, which is the same as seven point six four percent. Then again, you need a statement to answer your question. So you can say something like the probability that more than sixty seven percent of the selected students favor the move is seven point six four. Was it six three percent? Yeah, and that's what I got. OK, so before we move on, do we have any questions or I think we've done this topic justice? I hope your silence means you are OK and you'll be able to answer any questions that uh, involve sampling distributions, whether it's of X bar or um, P. Now, our next uh, unit is on estimation. Okay, now so far the questions that we have been looking at, you knew what the statistical parameter was. So you either knew what um, mu was, so you were given mu is equal to some value, or you were told that pi is equal to some value. But in reality, you will find you don't know what mu is because that is usually why you conduct a sample. You want to find out what's happening in the population. So if you noticed in the questions we're doing, we already knew what was happening in the population and we wanted to work out what's happening in our sample. Now we're doing the opposite, which is why we're sampling in the first place most of the time. We have, we don't know what's happening in, in the population, but we can always uh, deduce some things uh, based on what is happening in the sample. OK, so here we're working backwards in a way. So you'll know what is happening in the sample and then you'll be able to estimate uh, your value in the population. So we'll be estimating mu, estimating pi and other population parameters. OK, so with estimation, there are two types that we do. So we have statistical estimation. There is the point estimation. And then we have the interval estimation. Okay, now with the point estimation, point estimation, what happens is a single value of the statistic is taken to be the true value of the population parameter. So a single value to be the true value of 
the population parameter. So here, what this means is, uh, if I wanted to estimate the average age of Namibians, what I would do is I would take a sample of some of the Namibians, and then whatever average age I get, I will say, okay, that is my estimate for the average age of all Namibians. Now, I'm sure you can see that that might not be the actual value itself because every sample has its own errors in it. Okay, so you might have picked a sample of very old people, then you conclude that the average age of Namibians is much higher than what it actually is. Or you could have picked a sample of very young people and then you, ask, you estimate the average age to be much lower than it actually is. So here you're not doing anything extra except you collect your sample, then you work out the sample statistic and then you just say, OK, that's what my parameter is. OK, now most of the time uh, we don't do that, like I say, because of the errors in the sample. But uh, it's also a good starting point just to estimate as the unit says. OK, so we have measures and uh, point estimates that we use. So we have some measures. Then we have the point estimates. And then we have parameters. Okay, so the first one is the mean. That is a measure that we estimate. So we estimate the mean with the sample mean, which is denoted by X bar, and the parameter we're estimating is mu. Then we have proportion. which is estimated using p. So in some books you might see p hat, but it's the same thing. And the parameter we're estimating is pi. Then there is the standard deviation. So we estimate this using the standard deviation of the sample, which is denoted by s and the parameter is sigma. Then also the variance uh, estimated using S squared. So if you have the standard deviation, all you do is you square it, you multiply it by itself, you get the variance. If you have the variance, you can always get the standard deviation by taking the square root. And this uh, variance of the sample estimates sigma squared. Okay, so we need to know how to calculate uh, the mean. So the mean, so when we have a sample, because we're going to use the sample to um, get its mean and then use that as our estimate for the population, we need to know how to work it out. So the mean is just x bar. And the way we work this out, we say sigma x divided by n. Now this is just notation. This sigma means add up all the x's. So whatever values you get from your sample, you add them all together and then you divide by n. So remember n is the number of elements you have in your sample. So if I add all the values from my sample and then divide them by how many I have, that is how we calculate the mean. So sigma, I think you've seen this before. Sigma means add up all the x's, then divide by n. This is how we calculate the mean. And I'm sure from uh, statistics last semester you did 
all of this. Then the variance. So if I give you a sample, you should also be able to calculate the variance, which is S squared. The formula is the sum of the squares of all the individual elements minus n multiplied by the mean squared divided by n minus one. Okay, so this part means all the individual values that you get from your sample, you square each of them, then you add up all those squares here, this means you um, take the mean, you square it, and multiply it by n, and then you just divide by n minus 1. Now, this formula can also be written as they're equal. This is the sum of x squared minus the sum of x bracket is too big. So both of these will give you exactly the same thing. So this one here, what are we doing? We take um, our individual values we square each of them, then add them all together, and then we'll be subtracting this, the sum of all the values. So we take all the values here, we add them up together, then the answer we get, we square it, divide by n. So you do this subtraction, then you divide by n minus 1. And these two are exactly the same. They will give you the very same answer. So I don't know, last semester when you were working out the variance, did you draw a table to work this out or did you do it on your calculator? We made use of a table, man. Okay, that will take quite some time, especially if you have lots of values, because your calculator can actually do all this if you enter in all the individual values. So maybe uh, in the test we'll want to see your calculations and then you can just verify that using the calculator. So I can show you later on how to do it on your calculator. I think any scientific calculator, when you put it in stat mode, you should be able to do it. Okay, and then the standard deviation, which is S. This is just the square root of the variance, which is minus n x bar squared over n minus 1. So you just take the square root over here. So everything must be under the square root. And this, I'll put here or, s is equal to the square root Okay, so everything must be under the square root. So the only difference between this formula and that one is that I have put a big square root over there. So to get rid of the square that I have over there. So like I was saying, there are two ways that we estimate our population parameters. The first one is using point estimation, which like I said, isn't very reliable because it depends on the sample. So if you have a bad, not a bad sample, but you, if you're, it, the errors of the sample will affect the answer that you get. So another way of estimating a population parameter is by using confidence interval estimation.
Okay, now in interval estimation, we give a range of values around a sample statistic. Okay, so we give. Okay, and then we use that range to estimate our population parameter. Okay. Then the population parameter is expected to lie within this interval with a specified level of confidence. So we give a range, we say um, this is the range that the parameter lies within and this is our confidence level. So we say that the population parameter Okay, and that is why it is called a confidence interval. So when we give this interval, we say it's from this number to that one, we can say we're 90% sure our population parameter is in this range, or we're 99% sure it is in this range, we're 70% sure it is in this range. So we can uh, attach um, a confidence level to the range. Unlike with the point estimation, you would just say it's five, but you cannot tell for sure how far it is away from the parameter. You just say, okay, the population mean is, is five, but it may end up being 10. And that's, you cannot give uh, a confidence level. You cannot say I'm 100% sure, I'm 99% sure. You cannot give any uh, confidence um, interval. So unlike this one here, we give a range of values. We don't get, tell you the exact population um, parameter, but we give you a range. And then we say we are 99% sure, we're 90%, we're 80% sure that the population parameter is in this range. Okay. Then uh, there are some steps that we do to collect uh, to construct rather a confidence interval. So the first one we will start with as usual is a confidence interval estimation for the population mean. Okay, so here, let's say we have a sample and we want to estimate the mean of the population. So how do we go about doing that? So I'm sure most of you know already because you should have done something like this in uh, the assignment. Okay, now there are some steps that we follow. The first one is to collect a sample of size N. We collect a sample. Okay, so the sample will have 
a size n so it's small n because that is the sample so obviously there are some sampling errors which will occur because the whole population has not been studied so remember what we talked about when we talked about the sampling errors then the second thing we need to do is we need to determine the type of distribution so determine the type of distribution. So there are two types that we will be looking at. Is it a Z distribution or is it a T distribution? Okay, the Z distribution is the standard normal that we've been dealing with. Now T is uh, different, but it's another type of distribution, but the way we will use it is exactly the same. We will have a table of values and then uh, we look for our T-score and then we find that value in the table. So something like that. OK, so we have our Z or T distribution, so you need to decide which one is it. Now, uh, I drew a flow chart or I have a flow chart that you can use in deciding is do I use the Z or do I use the T distribution? So there are a few questions that you need to ask yourself when you're doing this. So the first question you ask yourself is, do I know Sigma? Now Sigma over here, this is the standard deviation of the population. So it may be stated in the question. So if you know the standard deviation of the population, then you would move in one direction. If you don't know what uh, sigma is, you would move in another direction. So this one, it relates to the population, not the sample, because if you have a sample, you can always work out the standard deviation of the sample. Okay, so do I know sigma? So there's two answers, you will say yes, or you will say no, I do not know the, I do not know sigma. So if you know uh, what sigma is, then you use the Z distribution. Okay, so that's very easy. If sigma is given to you, then you use the Z distribution. Now, if sigma is not given or you do not know what sigma is, you ask yourself, is the sample size 30 or more? So I will delete this. So is N, which is our sample size, greater than or equal to 30? Okay, so if N is greater than or equal to 30, so here you will say yes, then you use the Z because remember we say that if our sample is large enough, that means 30 or more, then it's approximately normal. And then if it is less than 30, so here saying no, then you use the T. So here you just ask yourself, do I know Sigma? Yes, use the Z. Do I know Sigma? No. Then you ask, is the sample size uh, 30 or more, yes, use the Z, no, use the T. Okay, so that is step number two. So step number one, you had to collect your sample with size N. Step number two, which is this one here, you had to decide, will I use a Z distribution or T distribution. Now that you have determined what um, Z is, sorry, now that you've determined which one you're going to use, the next thing to do is to compute the sample mean. So here, step number three, you compute the sample mean. And then 
uh, we all know how to do that. I gave you the formula. You just add all the x values, then divide by how many you have. That is your mean. Then number four, determine the value of z or t. Okay, so for today's class, we'll look at the z values. And then in the next class, we can look at the t values. Now with the z values here, we have this, we have the degrees, degree of confidence. And then we have what is known as the z limits. So if we want uh, a degree of confidence of 90%, then the z value we are going to use is plus or minus 1.645. If we want to be 95% confidence, 95% confident, we are going to use plus or minus 1.96. Then we want to be 99%, let me write 98 first. We want to be 98% confident, then this is plus or minus 2.325. And if we want to be 99% confident, then this is plus or minus 2.57. Five. Okay, so these are degrees of confidence. Okay, so now you may be wondering these values here 1.645, 1.96, 2. Point this, 2. Point that, where do we get them from? Now, here, what we're actually doing is working backwards from our table. So previously, we would know our Z value, then we would find the corresponding probability. Now I know the, the, the probability, I have to work out the Z score. Okay, so we can look at one. Okay, so let's look at the one of 90% confidence. Okay, how we work this out. So what we do here with the 90% confidence, let me see. Okay, so we will say one minus alpha over two. Oh, sorry, I'm writing, but you can't see what I'm writing. Okay, so we'll say one minus alpha over two. And this alpha over here, this is uh, what is left in order to make this 100%. So if I have 90%, it means that I have 10% left. And we know that 10%, this is just 0 0.1. So this is 1 minus 0 0.1. Okay, my pen is not working now. Okay. Over two. One minus zero point zero five, which is what do you get there? 0 
Okay, is that right? Yes. Okay. Right. Then what you do is you go to your Z table and then you look for 0 0.95. Okay. So we're looking for the probability 0 0.95. So if you look at my table, they are increasing here. I have 0 0.6. The values are getting bigger as I go down. So 0 0.95. See, the closest values I have are these two over here. So I have 0 0.9495 and 0 0.9505. So here they're equally close to 0 0.95. So I can't really say I should take this one or I should take that one. So what I do is I will take the average of the two. Now this value over here, this is 0 this is the Z score. So I'm working backwards. Remember, previously I would start in this column and then read, go into the probabilities. Now I'm looking for a specific probability and then I go and read the Z score. So this value here, this is 1.601234 and this is 1.65. So because they are at an equal distance from 0 0.95, I would just take the average. So it may be, you may find a situations where your probabilities, one is closer than the other, pick the closer one. But in this case, because they are at an equal distance from 0 0.95, then you would take the average. So I will add the two of them. So I say 1.645 plus 1.65. So I will take the two Z scores. I will add them together and then I would divide by two. And this would give me 1.6 four, five, which is the Z score that we have in our table. Okay, I'm trying to scroll up. Which is the Z score that we have over here. Okay, so that is where these values come from. So we can look at this one as well, 95% uh, confidence. How do we read that from our table? So, we do the same thing. I will, if for the 95%, I'll say one minus alpha over two. So remember, we say that alpha is whatever you need in order to make this equal to 100. So I need 5%, which is 0 0.05. So I will take the 0 0.05 divided by two. So I have one minus 0 0.05. I divide this by two. And this gives me one minus 0 0.025. Okay, and this is just equal to 0. 975. So this is the probability that you want to read from your table. So you would go to your table and you look for 0 0.975. Okay, so here 95, here the 96, the 97s, and then here. And you can see this one is exact. So I don't need to look at the next one. So this is the exact one that I'm looking for. So I read the Z score. So it's 1.9012345. So the Z score here is 1.96, which is the same as what I have over here. 
OK, so that is where all these values come from. So you can also try it, try it with this one. So you want a 98% uh, confidence. You'll just say one minus alpha. What is my alpha here? It is two because I need two in order to make this 100. So 2% is 0 0.02. You divide that by two, you get 0 0.01. Then one minus 0 0.01. You find your probability, then you go to your table and then read, find it. If you cannot find it, uh, you cannot find the exact value like I have over here. What you do is you look at the next one. OK, so that means it lies between them. So if I wanted 0 0.75, um, Two. If I wanted 0 0.752, it is between these two values because this is 50 and this one is 56 at the end. So 52 lies between there. So you would say which one is closer. If they're at an equal distance, then you would take the average of the two. If uh, one is much closer than the other one. So for example, I was looking for 0 0.9751. This is closer. Or if I was looking for 0 0.9755, this one is closer. But if it's square in the middle, then just take the average of the two. Okay, are we fine so far? I feel like I'm talking to myself today. What happened? Or what's happening? Like for me personally, um, I think we're getting there despite the confusion towards the end. What's confusing you? Um, For just to be honest, my foundation wasn't even good because I started doing statistics late, like due to regist regist registration rather. But then, mm -hmm. I've tried to catch up and I'm getting there. At least I started with everybody else. But yeah, yeah, like it's a bit confusing. So to say the alphas and what, 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 what's that? But yeah, I think I'm getting there. OK. OK, so please ask me if you have any questions because we're just starting and uh, you need to make sure you understand what we're doing so far because we are just going to build on it. OK, so um, the next thing we do is we have determined the Z values. So with the T values, we'll do that uh, later. Then with after you have your Z values, so it'll either be most of the time, these are the confidence, the degrees of confidence that we look at. So we say 90%, 95, 8, uh, 98, 99. Those are usually the common ones, but I've shown you how to do it. Even if I ask you for an 80% confidence uh, interval, you should know, okay, if I want eight to be 80% 80, uh, 80 confident, all I need to do is say 100 minus 80, which gives me 20. 20 is the same as 0 0.2. Then I subtract that from one, and then the value I get, I go and find it on the table. That's all you will have to do. Then uh, after we've determined our Z value over here, the next thing is the, we have to determine the standard deviation. So step number five, determine the standard deviation. Okay, so I gave you the formula of how to work that out. You should be able to do it. Uh, you can use your table. If it's given to you, there's no need to work it out. You just use it.
Okay, and then we can then construct, oh, sorry, I should say the standard error. This is equal to sigma over the square root of n or the standard error is equal to s over the square root of n. So in this case here, that means your sigma is given. In this case here, your sigma is not given, so you just use the one from your sample. So you determine the standard deviation, you have your standard error. Next is we construct the confidence interval. Okay, so the way we do this is we will say x bar minus z of alpha over 2. Now this z of alpha over 2 is just this value over here. It's this one, depending on your level of confidence. So if you're Looking for 90% confidence, then your Z alpha over 2 is that one. If you're looking for 95% confidence, then this is your Z alpha over 2. So it depends on what you're asked in the question. And then this Z alpha over 2, we multiply it by sigma over the square root of N. And this is less than or equal to our population mean which is less than or equal to x bar plus z alpha over two. So this alpha over two is a subscript, so it's smaller than my z over there. And then I multiply this by sigma over the square root of n, okay? So this one, or this formula over here, I use it when I, know the population uh, standard deviation. If I don't know the population uh, standard deviation, then I will replace this with the standard deviation of the sample. So the formula will be exactly the same, except here I have an S, over there I also have an S. Okay, so let us look at an, an example. Okay, so I'll just write this one. This is when a sigma is known. Otherwise, replace sigma with S. Okay, so let's look at the questions from today's worksheet. Okay, so we are told that the results of BBS 1A, B, uh, students, okay, sounds like there's some grammatical error here. Okay, so the results of this course is are known to be normally distributed with a standard deviation of six. A sample of seven students gave a mean of 55. Now, first thing we need to do is to construct a 90% confidence interval estimate for the true population uh, for the BBS 1B results. Then we do the same thing, but we construct a 95% confidence interval. And then after that, we compare the widths of the two intervals. So like I said, I posted this worksheet um, earlier today. I also put it in the WhatsApp group, so you should have it. Now let us work this out. This is exercise five. 
number one. Okay, so we write down the information that we are given. We are told that n is equal to seven and we are given sigma. This is equal to six. So sigma is given to us and we know that when sigma is given, we are going to use Z. So it is a Z distribution. Okay, so we know what sigma is, we will use Z. Okay, there it is. And then we are told that X bar is equal to 55. And uh, because we want a 90% confidence interval, our Z alpha over two. So if you don't remember and you don't want to look it up on the table, the normal table that is, you have this one handy. So if we want a 90% confidence interval, our Z value is 1.645. Okay. Sorry, ma'am, it's efficient. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was asking if your screen was in the right position because mine is stuck on. Is it not changing? No, it's not it changing? changing. What do you see? Um, okay, now I only see exercise five. Okay, it has now moved. I think this, the, the internet is slow. Okay. All right, so here our Z alpha over two, this is 1.645. Then. Can somebody have a question? Okay, so we've written down all the information that we have been given. Now we have to create our uh, confidence interval. So we say to do that, the formula for creating the interval is just this X bar minus Z of alpha over two multiplied by Sigma over the square root of N this is less than or equal to our population mean, which is less than or equal to X bar plus Z of alpha over two multiplied by Sigma over the square root of N. So we have everything we need. We know what the sample mean is, it's 55. We know our Z alpha over two, it's 1.645 and Sigma we are told is six and N is seven. So we just substitute and then that will give us the interval in which the population um, mean lies. So I will say 55 minus one point six four five okay then I multiply this by Sigma we say this six okay my pen is acting up again six over the square root of n which is seven it's a square root and this is less than or equal to mu, which is less than or equal to 55 plus 1.645 multiplied by 6 
over the square root of seven. So the only difference between this expression and that one over there is the minus over here. Everything else is exactly the same. And this will give us the range in which our uh, population mean lies in with a 90% confidence level. Okay, so we substituted then this you just type in on your calculator. So when I did that, I got 51.2. Okay, yeah, 51.269409065. And mu is in the middle. And on the other side, I got 58.7305035. Okay, so this is just what was written on the calculator. I think, let me see, I'm not sure how many decimal places they'll be printed on the paper, but usually three decimal places is good enough. So I will say 51. 0.269 mu. This is less than 58.731. Okay, so here we have this confidence interval, but now what does it mean? How can we interpret this? And the way we would interpret this is we would say. We are 90% confident that the mean performance or the mean grade of all students in BBS 1B lies in the interval and say two Okay, so we have this interval. We constructed a 90% confidence interval. So remember our, our mean from the sample was 55. Now we're saying from that 55, what can you say about the average grade of all the students that are doing BBS? So we've constructed a 90% confidence interval and we can say we are 90% confident that the mean performance or the mean grade, you can use a different word, uh, of all the students. So this all means population. So we started with a sample, now we're moving to the population, lies in the interval of 51.269% to 58.731. So if you were actually to work out the average grade of all the students, because at the end of the semester, we do have all your grades on an ITS system, you can work out the average grade. And we are 90% sure that the average will be between those two, 90% sure. Okay, is that one fine? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, very quickly, I just want to do the 95% confidence interval. So, B, we want a 95% uh, 
confidence interval. So the working is going to be exactly the same, except that our Z alpha is not going to be 1.645. Instead, the Z alpha over 2 is 1.96. So here, our confidence interval will say x bar minus z alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of n. This is less than mu, which is less than or equal to x bar plus z alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of n, and then you substitute. So the only difference between this and what I did previously is going to be this value over here. So we want to estimate with a higher confidence. Okay, so when we do that, we'll say 55 minus 1.96 multiplied by 6 over the square root of 7. This is mu. So we say 55 minus 1.96 multiplied by 6 over the square root of 7. So when I work this out, I got 50.5551378 and mu, here I have 59.444. To two, and when I round this off to two decimal places, sorry, three decimal places, this is what I get. Okay, now if you look at this um, interval, it's bigger than the previous one. You can see I'm going from 50 to 59. And the previous one, I was going from 51 to 58. Okay, so question C, I want you guys to think about it because we have to compare the widths. So the width of the interval will just be the um, upper bound minus the lower bound. So you will say 58.7 minus 51, that is the width of the interval. So you compare the two intervals and then let me know why do you think if I am now 95% confident, my interval has gotten bigger. Shouldn't it get smaller? Okay, so it's already eight o'clock. I think some of you have another class after this. So I will stop the class now. Uh, does anybody have a question before we go? Or this um, yes, is- Yes, ma'am, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, ma'am, uh, regarding the test next week, um, yeah. has the time been set when we're writing the test? Is it on Friday next week? When yes, the 6th of November, ma'am. It should be in the evening. Yeah, because we're also writing um, another subject, which is commercial law in the course. Um, what so time? I don't know, maybe it might flash. Um, what time? I haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. But I think okay. it's in the evening as well. Okay, I will mention it to Mr. Mwahi. Um, but I think that... Uh, can always shift the time. That shouldn't be a problem. But I will let him okay, know. Thank you. All right. Any other questions?